my name is Scott Ambler and uh, I'm from IBM and I'd like to share some uh, techniques for scaling Agile software development. Many of you might have heard that Agile or have been led to believe that Agile is only for small co-located teams. Um, that's simply not true. So I'm going to describe some strategies that have been shown to work in practice to scale Agile to uh, much, uh, much larger and much more complex situations. So that's the, that's the focus of my talk for the next, uh, next 40 minutes or so. So anyways, uh, my background, I'm the practice leader of Agile development at IBM Rational. And um, so my job is to help, our uh, help ourselves become more Agile, but also, more importantly, help our clients become more Agile. So I'm mostly customer facing, even though I do some internal work. I also work for a magazine called uh, Dr. Dobbs Journal. I'm going to share some industry numbers with you for who's doing Agile, um, how they're doing it, and all that good sort of stuff. I'm a firm believer in having fact-based arguments. And unfortunately, when you talk about software process, most of the arguments are religious in nature. And the traditional community, um, you know, the waterfall community, um, relies on religious arguments because the facts don't back up what they're talking about. So anyway, so you, beware of that. And I think this is an important thing to observe is that Traditional software development, the stuff we've been told to do for 30 or 40 years now, is based on theory. Most of that theory has been shown to be false. And this is one of the reasons why Agile is becoming so widespread, is because it's based on practice. And it's a big difference. Um, it actually works. So anyways, we'll uh, see some of that. I've written a few books. Um, I've written some of the, probably some, some of the key books for scaling Agile. I'll talk about Agile modeling in a bit. But I'll also talk about uh, a little bit about Agile database techniques. There's nothing special about databases and about data work. You can, in fact, be Agile with that. Now, unfortunately, the data community is almost the epitome of not being Agile, but that's a choice. So we can actually bring the quality techniques and the discipline um, that we see in the Agile world into the data world as well. So that's some of the things I've been working on. So if anybody tells you that you can't change a, a database schema easily, um, that's simply, simply not true. It's actually quite trivial, um, something I, I, I wrote in that book. And actually, one of the speakers today is going to talk about Team Studio, and the new version of Team Studio for database professionals, it actually has a lot of material in there based on my work, particularly in this book, and I, but I guess as well as in this book, for doing database refactoring and good stuff like that. So um, the tools are, are, are coming out there, so it's, uh, it's good to see. So anyways, let's uh, get into it. So I'm going to talk about uh, two basic topics here. I'll explore the Agile adoption rate a bit. Um, now, most, most of these numbers are North American, so you'll, you'll have to take them for what they are. Uh, and then I'll, I'll discuss um, how do you scale Agile, and I'll explore the issues. So, because a lot of the time, people think when they think about scaling, they think only about, you know, large project teams or about distributed um, teams. And yeah, that's important, but there's more issues to scaling than that. And I think this is something that the, the Agile community needs to, needs to uh, get a bit better at. But anyways, and I'll leave, you, I'll leave you with a few ideas. I always like to start off with a warning. I'm a, I'm a fairly blunt person. I believe in calling it like it is. So um, I'll share some ideas. So some of these sh you know, might uh, you know, confirm some suspicions you've had. Um, it's interesting. I, I, I have the privilege of going into organizations around the world. And as a result, um, one of the things I get to do is I get to observe what works and what doesn't work. And I see very common patterns of failure. In, most or in many organizations. And it's interesting that um, I, I was in at a couple clients this morning and their, their, per, their problems were fairly predictable. And because you know, as soon as I found out you know, that you know, a few key pieces of information, um, you know, like the way they did approached their requirements and the way they approached testing and the way they, they approached budgeting, um, I pretty well knew yeah, I, could t I could list off all the rest of the problems in their departments. Because once you make a couple key decisions like that, everything else seems to follow. So um, as a result, uh, and it's, I think this, it's important for a group like this that on the breaks, talk with each other. And what you'll discover when you do that is that you're all, your organizations are all suffering from the same basic challenges. And because you're making the same basic mistakes. And unfortunately, in the traditional world, a common reaction is to throw more bureaucracy at the problem. If we're only we were following more complex processes, if only we were writing more documentation, if only we were doing more sign-offs, things would be better. No, that actually makes the problem even worse. So um, 
observe that. So you know, if you get a chance, talk with each other, and you'll you'll, you'll discover that um, there's a few things. So anyway, so be skeptical, be open. Everything I'm, I'm going to talk about works in practice, and I've 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 seen it done, or I, and, uh, and almost always I've done it. So uh, I'm not going to share any theory. I'm not going to share any theory with you. If I do, I will point the theory out, and I'll make it very obvious when I am talking about theory. But at the same time, uh, please don't make any career-ending moves. So some of the things I'm going to talk about, even though they work very well, your organization might not be able to tolerate that level of success because choosing to succeed is a very difficult thing to do. It's very easy to choose to fail. It's very easy to choose to do the things that are comfortable, even though they don't work very well. Um, so you need to get out of that rut and you need to um, start choosing. But at the same time, don't get yourself fired. Um, so just because just there's very coherent evidence that writing a detailed requirement specification is actually a reasonably bad practice, that doesn't mean that your organization will allow you to stop writing requirements documents tomorrow. So um, even though you know, that would be a good thing. And one of the speakers has a, has a very coherent story for why executable specifications instead of static specifications are very good ideas. But anyways, um, we'll see what happens there. What? Um, oh, okay, there we go. Okay. So who's doing this stuff? So I'm going to share some data from two different surveys that we've done. Um, for whatever reasons, this one was mostly North American. Um, this one, well, was also mostly North American, although there is some European data there. Um, if you want to crunch the numbers yourself, one of the things that I do whenever I run a survey is I share the data with the world. So you can go to this page and you can get the, the original source questions as they were asked. You can also get the source data with the exception of people's emails due to privacy reasons as well as a uh, summary uh, PowerPoint slide deck. So you can actually crunch these numbers yourself. So this is an op these are open surveys. Um, I don't want to be in a position where I get, um, I've been accused of bias in some of the surveys and it was interesting. Um, in this survey I was accused, um, I got dinged by the academic community for running a bias survey because the, the results were that agile projects are more successful than traditional projects, which is not what people want to hear in the traditional community. Um, so I got accused of bias on that. So I, th ooh, this, you know, I said, uh-oh, this could be a problem. So I did a further analysis of the data, and I did discover bias towards traditional. And so I thought that, so that was sort of really, you know, so, and so, I, you know, so my response was, yeah, you're right, there is bias here, but it's on your side of the fence, not on my side of the fence. And, uh, you know, so, you know, but you could, you know, you please do the, you know, crunch the data yourself and see what you get. And that sort of ended the conversation because, um, it was leaning towards traditional, even though the numbers worked out better for, for the Agile folks. So anyways, let's uh, get into it. So anyways, um, last March in the adoption survey, we found that 69% of organizations had one or more Agile projects underway. 85% of this part of the pie um, was doing multiple Agile projects, which le leads me to believe that we've gone beyond the pilot project phase for most organizations now and they're taking it seriously. And this is because this is what I'm seeing when I go into companies is that they very quickly start adopting Agile because it works better. Of the people that said no, 25% um, of them said that they thought they would be doing Agile sometime in, during 2007. So we're going to run this survey again in about a month from now and we'll, we'll find out what actually happened. Um, these numbers are up from the previous year as well. Uh, I d I d although I don't, have the, I don't have the exact figures from 2006. So this is good. Um, and it was interesting, um, in, when we ran this survey in 2006, we had the most pessimistic numbers in the industry. Um, our adoption rate was the lowest one reported for two th 2006. I haven't gone back and done an analysis of, of the various adoption surveys for 2007, but I suspect we're also the lowest as well, because Dr. Dobbs has a very wide-ranging uh, readership. We've got a bunch of traditional people, a bunch of agile people, and everything in between. So as a result, I think our numbers are, are probably a little bit better than what we see from, uh, you know, say from Agile Journal or from some of the Agile vendors that run uh, surveys because they have more Agile customers than 